Salutations YouTube Ville. This is Anna, aka Boondog of Bliss, and I'm coming to you from my living room before I go into the office because I wanted to do a soft intro on this topic. The topic today is giving constructive feedback. Now, I know it's a departure from what I normally do. Now, listen to me on this. I'm doing this in advance of making videos which will have closet critiques of people who have volunteered to have me go into their closet and review their stuff. And because I'm going to include that in the video, I'm opening up those individuals for some uh, feedback that may not be constructive. And I wanted to kind of cover my ass, CYA, and have this show as a prerequisite for that. My intent when doing the critiques is to help and assist and allow the individual to grow um, and be better. My intent is not to bring the people down. And thus, I am turning to you as people who will participate in this process to engage in a constructive, positive manner. And I am, I don't want to take it for granted that everyone knows how to deliver constructive feedback. And I, I know that's the case because I've talked to a few of you who want to give feedback but are worried it's going to be taken the wrong way or want to say something but are afraid of how it's going to come out or sound or how the person will receive it. So I want to give, give some tools to those people who are afraid of giving feedback, who have a bad experience, maybe they've been blocked in the past, who actually have a lot to give but don't know how to wrap it up um, and put a bow on it. And when I say that, when I think of feedback and constructive feedback, I have a visual of a gift. And that gift um, is packaged nicely with a pretty bow on it. It makes it inviting to open up. But if you don't wrap it up nicely and it does not look pretty and inviting, the person may not want the gift. And there's the problem. They may not want your feedback because you didn't package it correctly, meaning you didn't deliver it in a constructive manner. So this video is for you if you've know, if had that experience or whatnot. I am not targeting trolls. I'm not talking about trolls too much. Uh, that's outside of the context of feedback. Uh, trolls that think that they give constructive feedback, actually they're, they're not. They're no, they're just trolls. So I want to make sure that there is a clear distinction between destructive feedback and constructive feedback and that fine line. Sometimes you think there's a fine line. No, there isn't. There's either this or that, and I'll tell you how to spot it and what to look for and how to, you know, quickly say, oh, that's destructive er, and not let it hurt you. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to go in the office and make it more official, but I just wanted to kind of have a softer intro because I don't want this to, um, to be taken out of context. It's coming from a place of nurture, desire for everyone to grow, and that's that. See you in the office. Let the lesson begin. This is going to be fun for me. Maybe not for you. It really doesn't matter, right? Anyway, so when it comes to constructive feedback, you guys all know there's really two types. Obviously, it's a spectrum, but there's two types. There's praise on one side, and we have criticism on the other. But still constructive. I, I want you to be thinking about this um, in terms of constructive feedback, meaning it's feedback delivered to help the individual get better at something. And the entire point of constructive criticism is really to impact the outcomes of the other person. So it's, um, it's your, your judgment um, that will impact and change that person to deliver a different outcome. If your feedback is not focused on that, then it's not constructive. Um, because if you are just personal, creating personal attacks or 
making statements without understanding what the goals are, um, the person's intentions and context, it's counterproductive at that point, right? So, um, so I'm going to give you a kind of how to give feedback and um, a, I guess you can say a five step process. I, I try to avoid, you know, numbers and numbering and 10 this and 10 that. But um, it's a five step process that I over time have um, kind of created in my mind. So f first, let's talk about the difference between constructive feedback and destructive feedback. So from a receiver point of view, so the person who is receiving the feedback, if something is constructive and given to you in the right way, um, it might sting for a little bit, but it should instill confidence as well. And you shouldn't feel like you're personally being attacked, um, but you will if given properly, you will receive feedback on what you can improve to be better and specifically you understand what that would look like and what the outcome will be. And it should feel helpful, it shouldn't hurt, you should feel like the person is coming from a nurturing place, an appreciative place, and wants you to grow and get better. Um, now, destructive uh, feedback um, definitely feels the opposite kind of way, right? So it's unhelpful, it's hurtful, it's attacking you and you as a person. Um, it has nothing to do with what you can do better. Uh, destructive feedback doesn't give you any, any gifts of wisdom, it's just a attack on you um, and it leaves you feel demoralized, discouraged, defeated and you don't know what you can do better um, and you feel oftentimes hurt. So that's how we can tell the difference between when we receive constructive feedback versus destructive feedback. So how to give constructive feedback step number one. Make your intentions clear. That dif what differentiates between destructive, destructive, and constructive is the intent. And make sure that is very clear when you are delivering feedback to someone, especially if they didn't ask for it. You know, constructive feedback normally is something that comes um, uh, by invitation. And if it's uninvited, it might not go over well, but make sure your intentions are clear. So at the beginning of the sentence, find common ground. You got to come from a place of nurture, a place of caring, and establish that in the very beginning. And you can find that once again by having common ground. But in order to start with common ground, you have to understand the context of that individual. Let's start a little recipe card. I mean, how often have you heard someone say, well, it wasn't my intention to do this. It wasn't my intention to do that. Well, you really need to make sure you've got that intention down and it's loud and clear. How to provide constructive feedback number two. Don't assume. You know what they say. When you assume, you make an ass out of you and me. And that is so true. You can quickly kill your credibility and delivery of your feedback by making assumptions. And unfortunately, a lot of assumptions are made. Also, when providing feedback, try not to compare. Um, comparing can really kill your credibility very quickly as well because once again you're assuming that that person wants to be like that person and if that person wants to be the opposite of that person there is completely no value to your feedback whatsoever so remember that don't use comparisons when providing feedback now how this can all apply um, even in your personal life um, I know for a fact with my teenager, comparing is completely useless when giving him feedback. 
However, I know that he compares when he tries to justify his actions. That's a different story. But when I'm offering him feedback, comparing is futile, completely futile. Um, everything I say goes by the wayside when I compare. So I want to be heard, therefore I'm not going to compare, right? And then in terms of um, uh, assuming, just know know the person enough to understand the topic which you're giving feedback on so that um, once again it makes sense to that person but if you assume there's nothing there the value diminishes with every word so that's my tip number two don't assume anything constructive feedback should be given on actual observations of the activities of, of the individual and you knowing exactly what the outcome would be if they changed. If you make assumptions, you're just opening yourself up to be incorrect. Um, the assumptions come from your context and kind of your view. So if you're coming from a negative place, you're also showing your cards. You're showing what your insecurities are and what you are worried about, and you're projecting that on that individual. How to give constructive feedback number three. Focus on the outcome, the issue, and the result, and not the person. If you focus on the person, you are not going to get a good, um, good reception. Let's just put it that way. Basically, you're making personal attacks and judgments on that person, and that is not going to lead them to change anything because you're not giving them anything useful. But if you focus on the outcome and the improvement of a result, you're kind of depersonalizing that feedback, so you're, it's not they don't need to come from a place where they have to defend themselves because you're not going there. You're focusing on something detached from them and a result, a behavior, and whatnot. So if you want to sound valid, focus on the outcome. And that might, you know, that might translate well to your household. Let's say with your, with your husband. When you say, you know, ah, uh, you do this to me and you do that. As soon as you say you, it creates a wall and a defense mechanism where your husband has to automatically defend himself. Same thing with any type of feedback you deliver to, um, to someone else. So focus on the outcome. Husband, I will do this if you do that. That goes a long way. Trust me trust me or husband you're gonna get some loving tonight if you help me with that that will go better than you never do anything for me you need to do this you need to do that so same thing with any type of feedback and on YouTube always remember you don't know those people and therefore you saying anything personal won't hold any water but if you focus on their outcome their result it may come across as um, productive if said in the right way. Depersonalizing the feedback does something really important. And what it does is it takes out the egos out of the situation. And, you know, often feedback can feel like we're being attacked by not personalizing it allows us to look at the actual outcome and the issue and how we can work together on making it better. And it takes the feelings out of it. And feelings, unfortunately, get hurt if you make it personal. How to give constructive feedback, number four. Be specific, not vague. A lot of people use generalizations and kind of have these inference statements. And you have to be specific. Um, otherwise, the individual won't know what to do that would lead them to change and won't know what the outcome will be if they do change. So you have to be very specific. You can say, if you update the length of this video, you will capture more attention because it's shorter and more succinct versus the length sucks. See the difference? 
or let me let me think of something else if if you remove the constant interruptions by your cat, your video may appear more professional. Can you tell me what's wrong with that statement? Can you tell me what's wrong with that statement? Actually, I should do a quiz. There's an assumption in there, and the assumption is that I want to be more professional, and I don't. Furthermore, on this topic of being specific, make sure you're stating observations, not your interpretations. So, you know, an observation is a, a recollection of what occurred. You're stating facts, and you're not focusing on your interpretation or your analysis of what occurred. Tell, tell what you've noticed, not what you think of it. And that's important, and that takes out kind of the emotion that can um, kind of sneak up on you and you're, you can accidentally toss that in there further diminishing the value of your feedback. So once again tell them what you've noticed and remove any thoughts of I think this is what happened. No, there shouldn't be any, any kind of question on the interpretation. It should be the exact observation recollection of what occurred and then specifically what can be done to change it and lastly what is the favorable outcome they will receive. Um, I see oftentimes on YouTube we receive feedback on what we can um, do better but there is, really isn't any any commentary on what outcome that will get us when realistically applied. Being specific and actionable when giving constructive feedback is crucial because it's pretty much like you wrapped a gift really, really nicely and the box is beautiful, the weight is heavy and we're excited. And then we open the gift and there's nothing thing in there. There's no substance. There's nothing. So if you're offering a gift of feedback, offer specific actionable solutions. There's nothing worse than saying, I know you can do better. I just don't know what that better is. I don't know how to be better. How to give constructive feedback number five. Make intentions clear. Oh my God, Anna, that's just like number one. What's going on? You screwed up. No, I am repeating and repetition is key. Make your intentions clear when giving constructive feedback. And you may have good intentions at the beginning of the message and you state it, but sometimes as your message is offered towards the end, there may be a loss of focus and you might transition to a different place where your loss, where you really have a loss of goodwill and you're now getting to a destructive type of place. So always towards the end of the message, look at it and see, it was this still intended to be helpful? So always circle back around and reread your message and is it very clear? Um, the, uh, that's a very important one. Um, I think, I think sometimes you come from a good place and then you use some words or make a statement or interpretation or you add feeling and it transforms that feedback into something that is no longer constructive. And so I always tell everyone that at the very end, revisit the entire, uh, the entire feedback language you used and see if the intention is still uh, clear. And how do you know when it's not? Well, when you receive a block. When you get blocked, when you receive um, a you know hurtful person that's saying, oh, thanks a lot for nothing, blah, 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 and you're like going, what? I, I just gave you constructive feedback. It's not my fault you didn't take it that way. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you a secret. I'm going to tell you a secret. It is your fault if they misunderstood it. 
That means you didn't send it correctly. That means you didn't voice it in such a way that they will find it helpful. So it's not their problem, it's your problem because you're the sender of the message. So always remember that. Oh, they do took it the wrong way. No, you sent it the wrong way. They didn't take it the wrong way. They received your gift and whether your gift was crap or whether your gift was awesome, they received it the way you sent it. So always remember that. Remember that. You as the sender of the message are in control of how that message is delivered and how that intent is read. If you are worried that your feedback might not come across the right way, good, worry and rephrase it so until it does come across the, wrong, the right way. So that's what I'm going to tell you. Before giving any feedback, um, there is value to seek understanding and getting additional information before you offer that feedback. Um, there's a saying, it goes, um, seek to understand before you seek to be understood. And that is such a powerful statement and it has a lot of value. Um, so that's one thing I do recommend before offering any feedback. Um, Make sure you've got all the information, you don't make any assumptions, um, and you clearly understand what the person's um, intentions are before you make your intentions known. If you leave gaps in your communication, which will appear as blanks to the other person, they just by nature will fill those blanks. And if they're not in a positive state of mind, um, they might kind of uh, fill them with something negative. And that's how we arrive at those situations where the individual says, well, they took it the wrong way, or that's not what I intended. Well, because you left blanks for them to fill in, and they took it in a way that uh, made sense to them. That is why clear intentions are so extremely crucial when providing constructive feedback and making it complete so that there are no blanks and the other person doesn't fill them with anything but what you intend them to hear and receive from, from you as a gift. On the feedback of internet trolls, and we'll use that, we'll use that ver verbiage pretty loosely on any, anyone that gives us feedback we don't want to hear. But I do want to differentiate between actual trolls and the people who do want to, who have good intentions but just don't know how to give you feedback. Um, I like to capture those people and put them in a little different basket and see if we can help them out and, you know, to join the reselling community and be productive um, with their feedback. I'd love to capture those people. Now, the actual trolls, trolls, yeah, whatever. I mean, they perform for like a nameless show and if you buy a ticket to their show, then you're a sucker and you're going to be a party of one. Don't forget trolls are cowards. They hide behind a anonymous account with a fake username. Um, generally there's no picture associated with their account because they're not willing to show themselves because they're scared, right? So um, always take that into consideration. If there's no actual person attached to the account, someone's just trolling. So, so what is my true intent of making this video? Well, my true intent is to get people to offer more feedback. Um, I know there's a lot of people watching because um, I see the views and I see how long you watch. Um, and I want to engage you more in providing feedback to those that ask. So whether it's me or whether it's the ladies whose closets we're going to review, I would love to get more participation. Um, your ideas can lead to an aha moment um, these ladies have with their closet and it might not be me it might be something that a viewer says that may strike a chord with with them so I just want to encourage um, 
us assisting ourselves without worrying that we're going to upset someone or we're going to hurt someone's feelings. Um, and just reminding you, if, if delivered in the right way, feedback can be a gift. And I want to be throwing gifts around um, for those that want them. I really enjoy you guys a lot and our conversations. Thank you so much for watching. You guys rock. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And to all those people that asked for feedback on their closets, feedback is coming. Um, feedback will be in a video. Unless you don't want it in a video, um, please let me know. That's really important. I don't want to do something that will um, kind of freak you out by going on air and talking about it. So if you don't want it in a video, please contact me this week. Thank you so much. Greetings and salutations. Toodles.